When you're installing metal roofing fasteners, it's important to know the pullout values of those fasteners and how it relates to real world wind speeds. Today on the Metal Roofing Channel, we're talking about exactly that with experts from Triangle Fastener Corporation. What's up guys, welcome to the Metal Roofing Channel. I'm Thad Barnett, make sure you subscribe here. We release new metal roofing and metal construction content every Monday and Wednesday. Well today we're talking about pullout values and this question comes from a commenter on the fastener testing video and you can check that out right here. He wants to know more about pullout values, what the numbers mean, what the measurements mean and how it relates to actual wind speed. So today to help us out about that topic, I have experts from Triangle Fastener Corporation and Jeff Hawk from the Sheffield Metals Technical Department to help us with our topic today. So Josh, can you tell us first of all, what pullout value means and kind of a brief overview of how pullout values are tested? The pullout value basically is the, the strength of the material and screw together um, to hold a load. Uh, for testing, what we'll do basically is put a screw in some kind of substrate a plywood, OSB, metal, anything like that. Um, hold the substrate and hold the screw and just pull them apart and see what load we get. Usually what happens is the, uh, the material will fail before the, the screw and it will start pulling out the material. I mean, okay. Sometimes when you get to a, a thicker material or a, a deeper embedment where it's just not going to pull out the material, you will snap a, a fastener, but the whole idea is to make sure that your fastener is stronger than the material you're, you're going into. So that's typically what we see in testing. So when it comes to actual testing of pullout values, how do you come up with the final number? Does it take multiple tests? Do you do it in one test? Yeah, it definitely takes multiple tests. Um, if we took one test, the number could be artificially high or artificially low. So we'll take um, you know, an average of three in steel and five in wood to get a, a good reliable number. Tell me about the actual units of measurement that you use to, to, to uh, figure out those tests. Uh, we use um, pounds. Okay, so that's pounds of pulling pressure. Right, yeah, we could do it in compression, but uh, the, the connection is gonna be weaker when you pull it apart. Um, so we wanna go with that low value instead of uh, a higher value that you know, doesn't do any good. We could probably distinguish between pounds and PSI or pounds per square inch. Yeah. Pounds would be your load and your PSI would be your stress. The stress would be uh, a force spread out over an area. So when it comes to standards and you know what the typical fastener can, uh, can achieve when it comes to pullout values, let's say, uh, let's say plywood um, and, and a typical fastener that like uh, we would use for standing seam metal roofing, what would be kind of like a, a typical range that you'd expect the pullout values to be or something like that? It kind of, it mostly depends on the material you're, you're putting the screw into and pulling out of. Um, anywhere from, you know, low 200s up to, you know, if it's going into two by four material, uh, inch and a half deep, you could be up over a thousand pounds. So what about when it comes to, you know, actual wind speed? Can you talk to me about, you know, what pullout values mean when it comes to uplifts and, and things like that? Uh, honestly, I really can't because the, uh, you know, the wind speed is going to act differently on different, you know, pitches of roof, the size of roof. We leave that up to the, uh, the engineers for the building. Um, we kind of focus on, you know, what the screw can do itself. Yeah. So they'll take that information and kind of work from there to see, you know, if a certain faster can do, um, you know, like 400 pounds and pull out, how many fasteners are they gonna need for a certain panel and a certain wind condition? Gotcha. So Jeff, then how does that relate to our engineering specifically? So the fasteners are a component in the assembly that's gonna determine, you know, what kind of uplifts you can get for, for wind speed. Um, you know, a lot of things go into wind speed for the design of the building, you know, as far as roof median height, partially enclosed, fully enclosed, the category, the exposure category it's in, um, you know, the design of the roof, hip gable. Uh, and then, you know, this is where the fasteners come into play is when it comes to the clips, uh, how many fasteners are being used per clip and how close the clips are being put together. So, you know, you get a test report, you know, you go get engineering done, you get a test report, it tells you your uh, design pressure based on the type of clip, 
the type of fasteners and how many there are, uh, you know, based for that test. And then you can use that to calculate out what you need to meet in certain areas for uh, different wind speeds. So let's say a contractor is, is uh, getting like a, a submittal put together or, or an architect needs some information. Is, is that pullout value going to be important for certain systems, certain warranties? The testing, the, the pullout values are important because, you know, say they want to use a fastener that's, that's a different type of fastener than what was tested with. Um, you know, you can, if you tested with the number 10 in half inch plywood, say with, you know, rated 375 pounds of pullout value, you know, you can go say to a number 12 that has a better pullout value um, because you're using a superior product, but you can't use something lesser than what you tested with. Right. Now that's why, you know, when we test in 24 gauge, you can use our engineering for 22 gauge because it's a heavier product. It should perform better. Uh, you know, if you test an 18 inch wide panel, you can go down to a 12, 14 or a 16 inch wide panel because it's a narrower panel. It should perform better. Um, that's where these come into play, you know, these pull up values, because again, you can't make a determination on a product if you don't have a baseline on how it performs. Yeah. So Jeff, talk to me about where we can find the information for pullout values and fasteners, specifically for Sheffield Metals, engineering and products. Okay, so we keep, we try to keep all the products that we use uh, in our systems, you know, have data sheets on them and pertinent information. So uh, that's all included on the tech stick. If you come to the tech stick and you go to the center tab on the starting page, general information, I'll let that open up, come down to product submittal info, double click on that. Uh, come down to fasteners, click on that. Companies that you want to look at, we're going to look at travel fastener company. And basically you're going to pick what type of fastener you're going to be using uh, for the material that you're going into. So we have fasteners for metal and fasteners for wood. This is all based off of our engineering. There's a, there's a million and one fasteners out here. Uh, if you're going to submit, more than likely it's for an engineering purpose. So we included the ones that we use. So uh, most common, say for in wood, uh, we have... Uh, the standard number 10 by 13 by one inch. And then we have a 10 by 13 by one for stainless steel, uh, stainless steel for aluminum applications. But if we look at the 10 by 13 by one data sheet, it'll give you a description. It'll give you the gauge that it's able to drill into. It'll give you a part number. It'll give you a quantity. It'll give you a, the weight per box. Uh, basically all the performance information on the product. Uh, but at the bottom, We'll talk about pullout values, and this will give you the pullout values based on the type of material that you're fastening into. Uh, as we discussed in a video before, you know, comparing plywood to OSB, half-inch plywood is 375 pounds of pullout value. Uh, 716 7 OSB is 166 pounds. So, uh, you know, the fastener makes a big difference uh, as far as pullout values, but so does the application you're using it in and the material that you're uh, fastening into. You wanted to see what we have in for fastening into metal, you go to metal, and here's all the different fastener types that we have available. Uh, number 14 by one and a half, it's going to give you all the same information and it's going to show you, again, the different pullout values for the different gauges of steel that you can, you're fastening into, most commonly being 22 gauge V-deck. So that gives you a little bit of an idea as far as the different values in pounds. Uh, for the different substrates that you're using based on the fastener that you uh, are picking. So Josh, does it matter how deep the screw is actually put into the material when it comes to pullout values? Yeah, absolutely. Um, we always suggest going through the material plus three threads. So you want to see three full threads on the other side of the material. Um, if you had a, a gimlet point, maybe you have three threads at the end of it. They wouldn't be full. So you want to make sure you get up on the shank your three full threads beyond the material. The only um, exception would be if you're going into a material that's longer than the thread, um, like a two by four. Uh, so we do have numbers for one inch uh, embedment and we're working on numbers for inch and a half right now. Well, Josh and Jeff, thank you very much for helping me out today and learning about pullout values. Hope you learned something as well. If you have any more questions, please comment down below. Make sure you subscribe here to the Metal Roofing Channel. As always, we uh, put out videos every Monday and Wednesday about metal construction and metal roofing content. So thank you very much. I'm Thad Barnett, and we will catch you next time.